Welcome to our national Q&A call. It is 9.02 a.m. Pacific, 12.02 p.m. on the East Coast, and today is the 4th of October, 2022. It seems like we were just January 1st, not too long ago, didn't it, actually? We were I talking know. about having to take the Christmas tree down, might as well leave it up, and then we didn't. Right. <laughs> Tiny <laughs> human had just turned one, now he's getting ready to turn two. Yeah, time is flying. It, it's, it is wild, but uh, we're still alive and well and here to help you, everybody, on the call. So let's get started right now with news you can use. And by the way, welcome from beautiful Southern California. Orange County is where I'm hailing from this morning. And uh, let's get going. Luckily, Orange County is not on any of the lists I'm going to talk about this morning. So we'll go through and tell you a couple of things that you need to be aware of. I've got some lists in particular we want to talk about. Um, the first thing is a factor that we need to focus on that we really haven't focused on recently uh, as an industry, and it's the cancellation factor. Um, what happens is people are getting, they're buying a property, putting in an escrow, and then they're canceling out at, frankly, record numbers. The top 10 uh, areas of the country where cancellations have become a factor are all at all-time records. So, for example... The number one city on the list a year ago had a cancellation rate of 2%. So of every 100 escrows that started that were legit to begin with, 98 of them closed. Two of them did not. Uh, the number today, as of last month, is 26.1%. That's a significant number. It needs to factor into all investors' calculations because there is a, uh, in some places here, a one in four opportunity, one in five opportunity to have a big hit and to tie something up for 30, 60, 90 days in escrow and then have it fail. In a lot of cases, these folks are walking away from uh, escrow deposits, uh, earnest money, whatever you want to call it, various states call these things various things, but they're walking away from uh, their money. In California, there's a statutory limit of 3%. Uh, you know, an $800,000 house, that could be $24,000. So it's not an insignificant amount of money. It's something to factor into your uh, calculations, and we're still trying to get at the heart of exactly why, but let me go through the list from 10th to 1st. Uh, the the 10th place in the country that is the worst for cancellations right now is Houston, Texas at about 21%. Then San Antonio, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, 8th place, 8th place, 8th place, I can say that one twice. Uh, number 7, Tampa, Florida. Number 6, Phoenix, Arizona. Number five, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Number four, Orlando, Florida. Looks like Florida's pretty well represented on this list, doesn't it? Number three, Atlanta, Georgia. Number two, Las Vegas. And number one, the most cancelable city in the U.S., Jacksonville, Florida, in the first position. So uh, if you're in Florida, it looks like you got to be careful. There, for some reason, a lot of people get in escrows and then changing their mind. And, uh, you know, Florida as a whole still looks like a good market, especially in an area like Miami. But uh, for some reason, uh, people are putting money up and then either walking away from it or fighting to get their money back. And so, you know, there's a, there's a problem there. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens down the road. This thing could get pretty high. It could be a problem. Uh, but it definitely needs to factor into your calculations. Keep in mind. These are all-time records for these cities. They never had a loss rate this high. All right, let's talk about 10 cities where the housing market is cooling off the fastest. And so these are cities that you don't want to be in long-term uh, in terms of a rental property because if you buy it today, it's going to be, it's more than likely, it's going to be significantly less in three to five years than it is today. So once again, we're going to start with 10th position, uh, the 10th fastest cooling off market, uh, Tacoma, Washington, number nine, Northport, Florida, number eight, Oakland, California, number seven, Phoenix, Arizona, and in fifth place, there's actually a tie with fifth, six, is Sacramento and Denver, Colorado. Those two are in fifth position for fastest market cool off. San Diego is fourth place, San Jose, third. Uh, obviously, California is well represented on this list. So if you're in California, you have to be very, very careful. Property prices are dropping like a rock. Uh, second place is Las Vegas, Nevada. And number one leading the list is Seattle, Washington. Uh, Seattle and Tacoma both are dropping faster than the other parts of the country. Now, uh, also, there's been some projections out there. Which cities are going to suffer the most 
in this housing downturn. And these are the, the five or six cities that have been identified. Austin, Texas, uh, Boise, Idaho, Salt Lake City, uh, Utah, Seattle, Washington, and Sacramento, California. Those are going to be the cities that's probably going to lose the largest amount of their average sale price. You're seeing numbers that are dropping 3 4% per month right now. That's 36 to 42% per year. Um, 40, even up to 48%. That's a significant drop. That's probably more than if, if they were able to sustain those kinds of loss rates. Those are a bigger drop than we saw in the Great Recession when a lot of people were losing their houses. So um, all of this is a combination of different factors, uh, properties, the number of properties for sale, the number of buyers out there, the number of sellers willing to adjust their price or pull off the market. Um, of course, the, the biggest, uh, uh, you know, uh, thing out there is, of course, interest rates. Uh, they're, they're off the chain and they're causing, you know, extreme problems in the marketplace. There are some new loan products out there that are helping. And I would encourage anybody who works with buyers to, to look into all of those kinds of things. There's some no down payment programs the government has. There's some lower interest rate programs that can be afforded by a seller buy down. Um, there are adjustable rate mortgages. Uh, we've talked about that before. Uh, marry the house, but date the rate. So that is that is going to be something that I think you're going to see coming up more. Uh, marry the house, date the rate. Now, go ahead and get the, get the house now. Pay the more expensive money. Suck it up for a year or two, and interest rates will drop, and then you refinance at that point. So marry the house, date the rate. That's going to be the new thing in the future. Now, the last list I want to go through this morning are the 10 cheapest states to live uh, for housing. Now these states, remember one of the, I have my list of five criteria you need. If you're gonna plant into a particular market, you wanna be at a certain place in you know, a specific place in the country versus doing a com complete 100% virtual. Now we do both. We have some specific markets we focus in, but generally we focus, Brandy for example, focuses in nationwide. You know, whatever comes in, it might be New Hampshire today, it could be Washington State tomorrow, it could be New Mexico the day after. We just don't know. That's that's part of the national thing. And frankly, that's an easier, cheaper way to buy a lot of product uh, houses. But if you want to focus in one particular area, I would suggest giving strong consideration to one of these 10 states. And these 10 uh, have basically one thing in common I'm going to talk about at the end. It is on my list of top five reasons why you'd want to uh, do something in one particular region. So uh, the 10th cheapest state to live is the state of Arkansas. Number nine is Michigan. Number eight is Oklahoma. Number seven is West Virginia. By the way, the, one of the nice things about being known as a cheap place to live is people who are moving from more expensive areas are gravitating towards these areas, frankly, because they are cheaper. Uh, and, and there's some lifestyle issues that go along with it that are very favorable to raising families, et cetera. Uh, so anyway, number seven, West Virginia. Number six, state of Mississippi. Number five, state of Kansas. Number four, Nebraska. Number three is the state of Ohio, third place uh, in terms of the cheapest states to live. Second cheapest state to live is the state of Indiana. I can tell you that's a great rental state if you guys want to buy rental properties and focus on one particular area. That's a great one. The rent rates are high compared to the prices of the houses, and it's a, it's a good uh, formula to get rich long term. Uh, if I'm going to do it, I would do it in Indiana. And the best, cheapest state to live is the state of Iowa. Um, so these would be pro these would be states that if you wanted to like build a rehab operation in a certain area, I would focus on one of these ten states. Now, what do these states have in common? Uh, that um, you know is on my list of things. They they tend to be they're either nine out of ten or ten out of ten red states. Um, and that's on my list. You want a state that has less regulatory action. You can see the effect of having less regulation. You become a cheaper cost of business place to do business. You become a cheaper uh, place to live uh, and lower overhead. Inflation tends to be slightly lower in these states as well. So interesting dichotomy there, but uh, 
Uh, if you're going to focus on a particular state, I would encourage you to look into uh, the various cities in those states. And you might find yourself a decent market. So, in fact, where we're doing our housing uh, specific, our, our flipping, uh, is in these states. So, plus there's one other that's not on this list that we do. Anyway, that's it for news you could use for today.